and thou shall be paid to you in Jerusalem. Oh, hear my prayer, all flesh shall come to you. God, who raised Jesus from the dead, will give life also to your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. God, who raised Jesus from the dead, will give life also to your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Hear with favor our prayers, which we humbly offer you, O Lord, for the salvation of the soul of Father Andrew Kuykendall, your servant and priest, that he who devoted a faithful ministry to your name may rejoice in the perpetual company of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction, but they are at peace. For if in the eyes of men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The Lord 
is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. My shepherd A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. We are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Forty-three years ago, we gathered and witnessed the ordination of Father Andy. It was the beginning of his priesthood. Today, we gather, and very appropriately, in the same spot as he ends his earthly life in his active ministry as a priest. When we gathered then, family were there, and family again today. His brother Michael, Sisters Mary Ann and Judy, one nephew, Joseph, three nieces, Patricia, Linda, Linda, Susie, and one great nephew, Nathaniel. And you, who've been touched by the life of Father Andy. When you read an obituary, a lot of times there's one word in which they try to capture the life of the person. It might be carpenter, farmer, homemaker, secretary, teacher, priest, and it could be bishop. Um, and, and that has such a poverty to one word to look at the life of someone. For family, it's an ending too. Um, for Father Andy's family, they've lost their parents, and they've lost two of their siblings, Father Andy and his brother Ivan. And there's a a real loss there. For the rest of us, we're here not because the obituary said priest, but because he touched us in his priesthood. And we come and remember him, his life, his ministry, and commend him to the Lord. For the family, a good part of their life was Christ the King. Growing up there, grade school, doing the things that young people did, CYO and all that, and that was certainly the case with Father Andy. He was baptized 68 years ago by Father Ivan Eck, who's still with us today. And in talking to Father Eck the other day, he reminded me of Father Andy's first day at school. Father Eck was the school bus driver in that time. And he said, Father Andy didn't want to be there. And he said he let them off the bus, the kids, and he said he always watched till they all got in the building. And he said Father Andy was walking slower and slower, (laughs) and the pace got narrower and narrower, but he finally went in and began that educational journey. When he got to eighth grade, he came down to the chancery office and talked to Father Leon Kirshen, who was vocation director, and said, I want to be a priest, 
and I want to go to the seminary. And that day, it was kind of dying out then. You could go after eighth grade for high school seminary. But Father Kirshen said, you know, we're not kind of encouraging that today, and you have a great school near Bishop Carroll. Why don't you go there? And if you're still interested in four years, come back. Father Kirshen kind of forgot about it, but the day after Carol graduation, he was back. And I still want to be a priest. And, and that's what he did. For me, I, I get to know him in the seminary at St. Thomas. And I always kidded him. He followed me throughout the early years of his priesthood. He followed me as an associate at St. Francis of Assisi. He followed me as a teacher at Carroll. He followed me as youth director, and there's one place he didn't follow me, and that was Venezuela. Um, he did come and visit Tish Palacios and Sheila, um, now shippers, um, and him came down together just after Christmas and stayed in until January. They were in college, and Father Andy came with them. And it's a great place to go in the middle of winter up here because it's hot, as it is every day. Well, after two days, Andy was ready to come home. The heat, the unair-conditioned house, the churches with tin roofs, the food, and he couldn't wait to go home. And finally, he got to go home. And he told me later that after the flight from Caracas to Miami, he said, first thing he did was get off the plane and kiss the ground <laughs> and then run for McDonald's. <laughs> uh, needless to say, he never came back to visit. As we come together, the church doesn't have us recite poems and different things. The church has us reflect upon the scriptures. In our gospel reading today, so very appropriately and so strongly tells us that if you eat my body and drink my blood, you have life in you and you'll live forever. What a consoling thing to hear. And, and that's what Andy wanted to be a priest for, to do and celebrate and provide the Eucharist to people and to himself. And he did that faithfully so, for so many years. And so Jesus, and uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke says, do this in memory of me. And he did it. But he didn't say that's all you have to do. Bishops would want you to do a little more than say mass in a day, I think. Um, if we look in John's Gospel, chapter 13, right before Jesus at the Last Supper um, creating the Eucharist, wash feet. And he said, do this too. And as we think of the Last Supper and the following suffering, death, and resurrection, he asks us to do that too and to suffer. And as we look at Father Andy, he had certainly those elements in his priesthood. In his ministry, bishops have a way of saying, do this, not in memory of me, but in memory of Jesus. And... Um, he had such a diversity in his ministry as an associate, as a teacher, um, he youth director. He and Bill Gress started search and tech in our diocese that have touched so many people, maybe some of you. Um, he went on as pastor administrators, especially in St. Teresa Hutchison, Hayesville, um, Schulte. And then he ended up being a chaplain to a nursing home. Most people, as one priest said to me this last week, was most of us, if we would have had the, the sufferings and the struggles that he had, we would have gone to the bishop and say, Bishop, I need to retire. But he did. He lived to do what Jesus said, do these things. And he did them, and he did them without complaint. And he did, as our second reading said, he did them courageously. And he did. Um, to get around in the care home. Uh, it was courageous to go around and to visit people, and you knew he was struggling with so many things. But he didn't give up. That second reading starts out talking about our life 
as St. Paul says, here on earth is like a tent. We don't live in tents permanently. St. Paul is saying this is a temporary time here. Don't get caught up in the things. Do, the, do these things in memory of me. And if we look at his life, certainly a fine car, going out to dinner, lavish vacations, modern clothing, <laughs> certainly weren't part of his life. They were the incidentals of life. And, and, and so he took to heart that, do this in ministry of me. The church wants us to focus a little bit at a funeral on what's happening. We're, we're called upon to face the mystery of death. And you might say, what's the mystery? If you were a doctor in the hospital or someone at the Bureau of Statistics at Kansas, we would say that Father Andy's dead. And, and that's the end of the story for his life here on earth and his life forever. But the mystery of death is this isn't the end. The first Eucharistic prayer for um, funerals says, um, Lord, for your faithful people, Life has changed, not ended. And so we're here today to remember Father Andy and what he did in the past, but to reflect upon this change. This what seems to be death and end is really a transition to a new kind of life. And in this new kind of life, there's no more suffering, there's no more pain. Um, an Irish saying says, <clears throat> Death is the poor man's best doctor. And it's really the best doctor for a lot of people a lot of times. And where he is now, there's no more dialysis, no more oxygen, no more pills, no more shots, no more. And the things that he bore so courageously, as St. Paul says in that second reading. Um, so we can take consolation in that. We need to maybe stir up in our lives the belief in that. Um, St. Paul says we walk by faith, not by sight. If we look just at the sight, we see death. If we look at this moment through the eyes of faith, it's a hopeful moment. It's a changing moment. It's a glorious moment. It's a returning home, as Paul says, leaving the tent and going home. <clears throat> For priests that have dealt with funerals, you, you can tell a family of faith from a family of people who are true believers. There's a sense of loss in both. There's tears, but there's a sense of hope. And for people without faith, it's the end, and there's no hope, and it's a sad moment. And so today, maybe we can stir up in our hearts our belief in the Lord Jesus and look at his life and his death through these eyes of faith. People my age would remember when 3D movies came out. And um, you would go to the movie, and they'd give you these glasses, and you would go in there and put them on, and things came to life on the screen. Um, that's what happens when we put on the, life, the, the, the eyes of faith. We see life and hope and glory and promise. So what's for us to do? Well, I think the first thing would be to remember Father Andy. Um, remember him in prayer, especially. None of us transgresses through this life without fault and failing and sin and impatience and, and hurt and whatever and remember him and support him and be an encouragement to him with our prayers and masses in the days to come. To stir up in our own life this sense of faith that I talked about and to live boldly, boldly as St. Paul says, live courageously doing these things, these things as Father Andy did. And these things, uh, can vary. We all come together for the Eucharist and the promise that that brings, 
But that's not all of it, just as it isn't all of life for a priest. All of us are called to live uh, lives of faith and witnessing that faith. So to embrace what's asked of us in a sense of doing what the Lord wants us to do is important. <clears throat> and finally, keep him alive in our lives and in your lives. You know, when we go home from a funeral, we don't erase names out of our address books. I'm probably the only one that still does that. But, uh, we don't defriend people. Is that what you say? I don't do Facebook, so I don't. Um, <laughs> so we don't eliminate things that remind us of them. And the little cards you got, you know, keep, keep that in your prayer book and remember him. I, I wasn't at the vigil last night, but in the introduction to the opening prayer, it says, we believe that the ties of friendship and affection that bind us together in life do not unravel with death. And so it isn't just an end of our relationship. He touched us, and he touched us in many ways. And we can be grateful for that. And the final thought of my final thoughts is um, what St. Pope John the 23rd said. And, it, and to me, it's very powerful. One time he was asked about people who died. And here's how he responded. Dead? They're not dead. They've just gone home. They're just around the corner, and they're waiting for you. And what a great thought to think about people who've died. They're still present to us in so many ways. We just can't see them. They might be around the corner walking in the woods. They don't cease to exist. We just don't see them, but they still exist. And so keep him before your mind and heart. Following Mass today, he, he will be buried next to his parents in Resurrection Cemetery. And there with his beloved parents, who we talked about often, we, we pray that he will rest in peace. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Father Kuykendall, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, Father Kuykendall, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother, Father Kuykendall, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins, 
and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name. For our good and the Church. We ask your mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice of our service, offered for the soul of Father Andy, your servant and priest, may now bring pardon to him who devoutly offered sacrifice to you in the Church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant and priest, Father Andy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Son and 
gratitude to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let perpetual light shine upon them, O Lord, with your saints forever. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Let perpetual light shine upon them With your saints forever, for you are merciful. For with you there is merciful forgiveness, and by reason of your law I have waited for you, O Lord, with your saints forever. For you are merciful. Let perpetual light shine upon them, O Lord, with your saints forever. For you are merciful. Because with the Lord there is mercy, and with him plentiful redemption, with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Let perpetual light shine upon them, O Lord, with your saints forever. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Let perpetual light shine upon them, O Lord, with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Renewed by food from your heavenly table, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the power of this sacrifice, the soul of Father Andy, your servant and priest, who faithfully ministered in your church, may exult forever in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final commendation and farewell, I'd just like to offer a word 
of gratitude. Uh, Father Dwight Burkett, thank you for uh, preaching the homily today for Father Andy's funeral mass, a very beautiful homily, uh, very insightful. We thank you for that. I'd like to thank my brother priests for coming together in such great numbers for the funeral mass of one of our brothers. And thanks to the family. Uh, we don't know each other, but uh, we're very grateful for your coming uh, to be with us uh, to celebrate this, this funeral mass for your brother and your relative. Uh, Father Andy was very important to us, very, very honored member of our presbyterate. I'm very grateful for the last five years when he lived uh, near where I live in the priest retirement center and working at the Catholic Care Center as chaplain. Uh, although he lived in the priest retirement center, retirement was never in his vocabulary. In fact, when I mentioned it, rather with a little bit of trepidation as he was facing some very serious health issues, dialysis and other things, he made it clear to me in no uncertain terms that he was not going to retire. I might share that as a nice uh, sentiment for our priests, <laughs> that they, if they're thinking about retirement, you may want to take Father Andy's uh, example. But nonetheless, he, I think, was ready to work and to serve until the very end. And uh, he did so uh, with distinction, particularly in service to the sick and the elderly at the Catholic Care Center. I, I heard from numerous people there as I would uh, enter the place how they loved Father Andy. And I think one of the things that he did so well is he accompanied the dead, uh, the dying and the dead. As they were dying, he was with them. He would spend hours and hours with them uh, into their very last breath. And then that beautiful ritual where he would uh, accompany them, if you will, usher them out the door uh, uh, so, so that they would have somebody with them until the very end. What a beautiful example of a priest. And so for all of that and for the many, many things that we can't even know because of our limitations, but God knows because of his unlimited knowledge, for all of that, for the wonderful ministry over these many years in service to the church in the Diocese of Wichita, we give God our humble thanks. Thank you, Father Andy, for blessing us with your life, for blessing the whole church with your priestly ministry. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Father Andy, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Father in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to, com to comfort one another with assurances of faith 
And so we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the dismissal, it is our custom and tradition to sing the Salve Regina. So I invite us now to join in that prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, Et Spes Nostra Salve. A Te Clamamus, Exules Filiae, A Te Suspiramus, Gementes et Flentes, In Hoc Lacrimarum Vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exili. our brother to his place of rest. Immediately following the funeral mass, please follow the usher's instructions to exit out of the southwest doors of the church to the parking lot that way. Uh, the burial will take place immediately following at Resurrection Cemetery. If you could please uh, put your kneelers down where you were seated so we know where to disinfect the pews, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> 